Consider a fleet management solution with GPS trackers installed in each vehicle. These vehicles send billions of records containing location details every second. Storing all these details in one table is not practical. We need to store this large amount of data by distributing it across multiple nodes. Distributing this data across multiple nodes is called database sharding. Horizontal sharding distributes rows across multiple tables or databases, with each shard containing the same schema but a subset of the rows. There are two sharding strategies. First, range-based sharding divides data based on ranges of a key, such as date ranges or numerical ranges. This method is simple but can lead to unbalanced shards if the data distribution is uneven. Second, hash-based sharding applies a hash function to a key to determine the shard. This strategy provides a more even distribution of data. For example, Redis and DynamoDB databases use this type of sharding to partition data within a cluster. Today, we will set up horizontal sharding for a PostgreSQL database using the Citus extension. This will help us configure horizontal sharding efficiently. Let's get started by writing a Docker Compose file to set up our two-node cluster. First, we need to configure the master node to maintain the distributed table and apply the hashing algorithm. Note that the master is exposed on the default PostgreSQL port. Next, we need two worker nodes to store the shards. By default, Citus creates 32 shards, and these are distributed evenly across each node. Note that these two worker nodes are exposed on different ports. Let's start our cluster using the docker compose file and docker compose up command. Next, we need to create a migration script to register the worker nodes and create a distributed table. We will start by registering both worker nodes with the master node. After that, we will create a table called vehicle tracking to store location data. This table will have a composite key consisting of the ID and VIN number. Finally, we will mark the vehicle tracking table as a distributed table, using the VIN number as the key for sharding. This means the VIN number will be used for data distribution across the nodes. Let's execute this script to set up our initial configuration. Next, let's write a script that will help us insert and retrieve data from the table. First, we will define the connection details, specifying the address of the master node. We will then create a utility function to connect to the database. Next, the insert data function will allow us to insert data into the table. We also have a function to retrieve all location details. Finally, we'll include some orchestration to decide the type of operation to perform. If the operation is view, we will retrieve details from the table and print them to the console. If the operation type is insert, we will read command line arguments and insert data into the table. Let's insert some data into the table with two different VN numbers. The data for the first VN will be stored in one shard, while the data for the second VN will be stored in a different shard. Out of 32 shards spread across two worker nodes, the shard will be selected based on the hash value of the VIN number. Let's retrieve all the data to ensure that it was correctly inserted. I have a helper script that allows me to check which shard contains what data. It queries shard management tables such as shard, placement, and node to retrieve the configuration of all 32 shards. The script then queries each shard on the specific worker to retrieve the data and forms a summary table. When executed, this script outputs a table with the shard ID, worker name, and the data present in each shard. Here we can see only one shard is having data for vehicle with VIN number 1. We can see this shard is present on this worker node. This is also applicable for vehicle with VIN number 2. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I've included a GitHub link in the description where you can download the script and see this setup working on your machine. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It's free for you, but helps me a lot. Thank you.